I am tearing up. <laughs> it just I about can't. screamed right now, <laughs> and I'm not even there. <laughs> now that's inspirational, Natalie. <laughs> I feel inspired today. <laughs> Part two I, of you this. Can, I could be here for another <laughs> no. hour. And then I was top of my class. Uh, there were only two of us, and the other guy was in the hospital. So uh, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> and I always go, he winds up homeless on the street, and it's my fault. Yeah, now you sound my wife. And you can get off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Call the Google. Call the Google. Yeah. Oh, yeah. control. Alexa, how did you get across? <laughs> Paul, I cut you off early. What were you going to say? What? <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Don't do that to me, Paul. Don't do that to me, man. Thanks. I don't know what got into my head, but I thought, I thought this thought, you know, if I'm working year round, I might as well get paid year round. <laughs> Sweet Talk is a weekly 20 minute podcast brought to you by the Continuing Education and Workforce Training Division of Idaho State University's College of Technology. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud and subscribe today. Now, it's time to get started with Sweet Talk. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sweet Talk the weekly podcast here at Idaho State University's Continuing Education and Workforce Training. I am Paul Dickey, your host and the uh, Video Instruction Manager and Apprenticeship Coordinator here at uh, Continuing Education Workforce Training. And I'm joined, as always, by our illustrious leader, Gary, Gary Salazar. How are you doing today, Gary? Hey, Paul, I'm doing good. Thank you very much. Illustrious. I like how you keep giving me different adjectives. I'm doing great. Uh, appreciate appreciate the intro. Glad to be here. We have a fantastic guest today, but we also have Angela's back with us. And Angela Wilhelms, our marketing coordinator here in uh, Continuing Ed and Workforce Training, or SWEET. Uh, thank you, Angela, for joining us. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Uh, awesome. And uh, Paul, we have a fantastic new guest from some, uh, from one of our own departments with, within the College of Technology, right? Right, right. Um, so uh, this uh, guest was recommended to us by uh, previous guest Han Henry O, who's Henry O has been on the podcast a couple of times. And um, he, he said, hey, you should have this person on. Uh, he's a great benefit to our department. And uh, he does so many things. So he said, sure. Yes, let's have have him on. So, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Henry's a fantastic guy. And he's a he's a strong uh, proponent for what we do here and helps us get around and, and find different people to interview. We have today joining us, uh, Mr. Lance Howell. Lance uh, works uh, for Henry in, uh, in the, uh, the nursing program, the ADRM program. He's one of the clinical instructors in there. Lance, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you're doing well this morning. I am, thank you. Boy, with awesome. that introduction, I'll have to make sure I uh, slip Henry a little extra money. There you go. You know, I, I'm sure that's the his ulterior motive there is. He does that with a lot of folks. So, hey, thanks for joining us. You bet. Uh, and, and we're going to be talking with Lance this morning about, uh, about uh, the nursing program here within the College of Technology in the Health Occupations Department. So we're very fortunate. Um, Lance, would you tell us a little bit about your background? I mean, you are a registered nurse, but you're also a clinical instructor. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, my, my experience, I am a registered nurse. Um, I graduated uh, back in 2000. So I've got 22 years of experience. Uh, a lot of my experience stems from um, emergency room trauma, uh, intensive care unit, and uh, management. I, uh, I've, I've been in several management, um, chief nursing officer, directors of, of different departments all throughout um, a lot of facilities all throughout the West here. Uh, in about 2016, I decided, you know, I've kind of, um, I, I, I want to teach. I want to help, help bring a little bit more of uh, the nursing, my nursing experience to, to these students and, and hopefully help change and inform the uh, future of, of our, our uh, registered nurses. Excellent, excellent. And when, when did you come to Idaho State University? In uh, spring of 2017. 2017. So you've been here for uh, uh, a few years, five yeah. years. And, yeah, five years. Uh, have been a, a strong part of that department. And, and did you start out in, what is your current position? Is you are assistant clinical director, clinical director? Yeah, so, so my current position is assistant clinical professor in the, in the ADRM program. But when I started, I was kind of over 
um, the simulation lab, and also uh, I helped out with the licensed practical nursing program as well. Excellent. And when you say, for those who don't know out there, the ADRN, that's the associate's degree registered nurse? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Which is a fantastic step if anybody's looking for a, a, an educational path to move on and, and grow within the, the field of, of healthcare. Uh, it's one of, one of the key steps you have to have. Is that right? Well, it is. It, it's, you know, um, it, we really are fortunate and to have, have it at the College of Tech, the associate degree RN program. It's, it's a hidden gem where we, you know, the, the students, um, they're more non-traditional where they, uh, they are licensed practical nurses first. So a lot of them work full-time jobs as registered nurses, or sorry, as licensed practical nurses. And it kind of builds on their, their education and they make money while they're, they're going to, to nursing school. Hmm. You know, Paul, that sounds a little bit like uh, like an apprenticeship where somebody's already working in the field and, uh, you know, trying to gain experience there and they're going to school at night or whenever they need to go to school to advance within that that field. It sounds very similar to what an apprenticeship is, but this isn't an apprenticeship, uh, is it? Lance, this is not an apprenticeship, uh, uh, like a registered apprenticeship with the Department yeah, of Labor. This is yeah, just a, a, health, a health field program, is that correct? It, it is not an apprenticeship. No, you, you, it, it's a separate licensing. So gotcha. you, you're licensed as an LPN and you work under that particular scope. Okay. Um, and, and you don't have to move on to be a registered, you know, you don't have to be a, move on to be a registered nurse. It is just a, a stepping stone, but it's a requirement to get into our program. Right. right. So okay. once those, once those students apply and they are in our program, um, it is a lot different than a bachelor's program because they bring nursing experience already into the registered nursing field. Yes. Yeah, so Lance, sure. could you clarify for me, what is the tier of nursing? I mean, I, I, I work with uh, Raylan Price, who's our health coordinator here, and it seems like there's different tiers of nursing. Could you explain those tiers for me just briefly? I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I've so, always been curious. Yeah. So licensed practical nursing is, is a nurse. They are just licensed and they usually are delegated or they, they delegate to CNAs, um, medical assistants, things like that, where a registered nurse is kind of the top tier of the clinical side of it. And then you have a nurse practitioner who is who could be over, and that's a, a master's or a doctorate degree that is over the, the registered nurse part of it. But they all have to have that nursing, that nursing licensure to move on. Okay. All right. So it's it's not like you can get a biology degree and go take mm -hmm. the physician assistant exam. You have to be a registered nurse to be a nurse practitioner. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now currently, um, uh, do we have enough nurses right now um, in the medical field? Uh, I know with the uh, COVID the last few years, um, there have been people who have left the field because of uh, frustrations. So how are we on uh, the amount of nurses we have in the area? Right. We're still very short. Um, we, we have one. We have a lot of, of nurses that were kind of on that cusp of gra or not graduating, but retiring. And so that that's a big void. We also have um, d during this whole COVID pandemic, we had a lot of nurses that went and traveled to, to specific COVID units. Um, the uh, the money was very good, and of course they they left whatever area it was, you know. And it's not just Pocatello, Idaho; it's all throughout the nation. And when they when they uh, left, that caused a huge void, especially here in our little community. I mean, when you have one hospital and you have a lot of registered nurses leaving or practical nurses leaving, how do you backfill that? And we've seen a, a decline in our, um, in our admissions, but now that, that we have a big, um, a big surge now, we have more students applying for it. Um, nursing has been, has been very difficult, and especially during the COVID pandemic. And uh, I, I think a lot of people went into the into the um, 
profession thinking that, you know, I'm going to make a lot of money and, and it'll be a very good job. But the COVID really took its toll on nursing more so mm. the bedside, particularly. Right. Yeah, that was right. a great question, Paul. And, and Lance, thanks for responding to that. Uh, but, but here with Pocatello is, is geographically, we're seeing that here. Is that true uh, nationally too? There's a big shortage of nurses? Absolutely, yes. Right. So you, you mentioned that now we're having a, a larger enrollment that we're starting to see coming into your programs. What's driving that, do you know? Well, I, I think really now that COVID's kind of settled down and it's 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 got people a little more motivated back to, okay, well, yeah, you know, this kind of came and went, maybe it's something that I, that I can, um, that I can, can do. But to be honest with you, you kind of do see that when you have, when you have these, these things that come and go like this, and it, it is, <clears throat> it goes with plumbing, it goes with welding, it goes with all these other all these other industries that you, you're going to see, you know, high enrollment and a low enrollment, a high enrollment and low enrollment. So that's kind of what we we typically don't see it in nursing, but we have particularly with the last couple of years. Right. Okay. Right. So with the short of nursing uh, nurses and uh, maybe a, a greater demand, are we starting to see that reflected in what um, uh, health organizations and hospitals are paying the nurses right now? Pay is always a big, pay is always a big issue. And, you know, uh, when I, uh, when I was in management and, and I always, I, I always did my research and people do not leave organizations because of money. People leave organizations because of management. They leave it because of the way they're treated. And if, if these hospitals, and I'm not talking about any particularly focused on the bedside, focused on who is actually there with that patient 12 hours a day and takes care of them, they, it, it isn't the money. It is how you're treated by the organization. You know, you're so right, um, Lance. I mean, the, the nurse is there to provide health care um, and to, you know, uh, see to the patient's need, but also I, I look as the nurses is the face of the hospital for the most part, because, you know, the, your patients that are, uh, you know, in, in the hospital, that's who they interact with. So they, you know, in my, you know, for my brief medical stays and so forth, they're the ones who actually represent the hospital 90% of the time. Yeah. Well, if you think, I, I mean, in, just throwing a number out, say you have 1100 employees in a hospital, particularly, four to 500 of those employees are, are nursing. Mm. Well, yeah. So, wow. so when you, when you start making cuts in, when you start making cuts in, you know, um, in, in workforce, who's the biggest one that gets cut? It tends to be your nursing that gets cut. Right. 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 And, yeah. and so when you, when you're, when you go into a profession that has 100% job placement, and now you go to an organization and within that organization, they start saying, well, we're going to have to low census. Yeah, we're going to have to maybe your maybe your your contract is for 40 hours a week, but we're cutting you back to 36 or however it is that really wears on nurses. And, well, you know, I can go over here to this organization and guess what they're going to do? They're going to pay me for 40. hours. I'm going to work 40 hours and they're paying me for 40 hours. Sure. And so that's what you see a lot of is, you know, nursing being disgruntled because of, you know, kind of how these organizations value them, or I should say devalue them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, that's not an uncommon thing to hear about a lot of different industries, particularly Correct. in terms of stress, you know, the circumstances with COVID and, and what's going on in business around the world. I, you know, I, I can understand that it doesn't make it any easier for those who are in, in positions like this, you know, and people have to choose what they want to do. And that causes influx and, and loss as well. Hey, can, can we go back to uh, your classes when you when you became an instructor and you taught your first class compared to now? You know, obviously now after five years here of teaching and all, 
you've evolved, you've become better, you, you know, different things. But how was your first class? I mean, you wanted to do teaching and give back. Do you remember yeah. your first class when you came in? How'd that go? Yeah, you know, I I teach a lot of classes outside of, of the college. So I teach what's called an ACLS course and a trauma nurse course. And and I, I teach different classes. So the, the teaching part really, it wasn't too much different, but the, the, the student learning, in my opinion, is a lot different. You know, when I teach these classes, it was just for two days and, you know, they, they take a test and get their certification and they're out the door. Well, now it is a commitment between me and the students. And when I went to nursing school, you got to remember when I started nursing school back in 1998, a study guide was your med surge book. Mm. So, you know, we never asked a, an instructor, hey, uh, we need a study guide for the test. It was, well, you have chapters one through 10, do the chapter objectives, do the, the test questions at the back of the book, and, and that's your study guide. And now, you know, students request study guides, they want study guides, they want a lot of direction that is really something that I, I really had to understand, okay, you know, they buy these expensive books, but they really don't seem to open them that often. <laughs> that was one hard, that, that was really one, that, and it's still true, it is so true, because they have so much that they can choose from and so many resources that a textbook, a, a med surge textbook, I wish I had one here handy, is you're looking at probably almost 2000 pages. Wow. wow. And so for them to lug that around, pack it and, and to open that up, they just don't do that. Everything's kind of an ebook and they do a lot of ebook. They do a lot of, you know, research. I mean, you can Google anything. You guys know that. Mm. And so they're not forced to open books. And I'm really trying to get that traditional reading and going through books where now I've changed my whole teaching where before I lecture, they have to come prepared and they actually have to read and do some chapter objectives, key terms, and the testing that's, re that's in the book that they have to present before they come to class. Sure, yeah. sure. It's a different generation. And, um, you know, the, a physical book is, is, you know, something that they just don't interact with nowadays yeah. for a lot, a lot of the younger students, for the lot of the younger students. And it, so, um, Lance, um, the college technologies actually implement or, or just had a brand new uh, simulation lab built. And um, how will you be interacting with that new simulation lab? Well, first and foremost, I'm so excited that we we have that, you know, it is simulation is really the wave of the future. They're actually looking now more and more that they're going to give us more simulation hours versus clinical hours. So we can spend more time one on one with the students, with the with the mannequins. And it's high, you have like a high fidelity uh, mannequin and a low fidelity mannequin, and they are very interactive. Um, we can change heart sounds, breathing sounds. The students have to come in. We give them a scenario. They have to, you know, draw up medications. They have to see, okay, what are what is their blood pressure? What's their respiratory rate? This is going to be something very good for all of us because we have respiratory therapy. We have pharmacy. We have EMT. We have a lot of OT, PT. We have all these different um ancillary departments that we work together with and being able to come together in the lab and all of us work together is going to be more of that hospital bedside feel versus, you know, um, basically just sitting in a classroom and now it's just all nursing. Yeah. And so the, the Bay, the, the, the clinical simulation that is going to be, um, that's going to be up and coming is, is really, is going to be something that that a lot of colleges around us do, but I think we're going to take it to the next level. Great, that's, you seem so super cool. excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, you know, we're starting to get a little bit closer towards the end here, but yeah, I, I'd I'd love to hear a story from you if you have one of maybe one of your favorite experiences in the classroom here at uh, Idaho State. Uh, I don't even know how many classes are you are you carrying as a load as a normal. Load? Yeah, so we uh, 
with the ADRM program, we teach a, a summer course. So I'll teach like a leadership and management and a transitions course. And then um, fall and spring, I, I have a, um, you know, the med surge part, medical surgical part of it is very big. So I, I teach just those, those two courses. And then I help out with um, nursing fundamentals and, and health assessment. But I, I think really, I, I, you know, and, and this is more of a broad um, classroom experience, Gary, is that um, when you're teaching and that moment that you're teaching, you see those students get it the aha moment the light bulb the oh my gosh i've pulled all of this together because nursing really builds and that's what it is is it it builds upon how i teach so i of course i don't come out and teach all the hard stuff first it builds and so in my spring semester in med surge when i teach critical care everything that i've taught builds on that patient that is the sickest and that's the part where I really enjoy probably the spring semester the most because of the critical care aspect of it. And now they're like, oh, I understand what an ABG is. I know why we have to give this cardiac med. I know why we're monitoring this patient's blood pressure, heart rate. It's all built upon that. So I would say spring is kind of when we let our little chicks out of the nest <laughs> We're done feeding them <laughs> and they, their wings better be strong to fly because wow. that's, that's what they're doing. They're, they're going to be taking care of me, my, my mom and dad, you, and that reflects me. And I need to be, I need to be the instructor. We all need to be the instructor that produces these professional nurses. Uh, yeah. So I have one question for you, and that's back in regard to the lab that you now have. Can you talk a little bit about how that prepares students for the workplace? Once they get out, how much different is their preparation to start in the uh, workforce versus previous to having that lab? Right. So to go back to the LPN role, these LPNs are in clinics, they are in the hospital, they have a lot of experience. So when we get them in the lab, they're really comfortable, they're understanding, hey, I need an IV started, I need an IM injection going, I need a, a medication pulled together. But to your question, Angela, is that they come in there and they are practicing and learning, okay, maybe I need a little more practice with an IV start, maybe a Foley catheter insertion, maybe, a, maybe I need to watch and see how a patient is intubated. What do I need to do to get my supplies ready to intubate this patient to help the physician out? So it's more of a, okay, I can come here and fail, but I'm going to try and I'm going to fail in front of my instructors and not on a patient. So it really does. It, it, wow. it basically yeah. is, you know, yeah. just like anything you prepare for, you're, you're going to prepare, but you're going to fail. You're going to have those failures. And then when you're on stage, it's like, okay, I've prepared. Now it's, now I have to be on stage ready to perform. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well said. Great yeah. question, Angela. Thanks for asking that. Hey, you probably heard the timer go off. Yeah. But Paul, did I, you want to ask I got one more thing? One last question. One last question for Lance. Lance, um, could you talk about what is the most rewarding part about being a, a nurse? The most rewarding part about being a nurse is, um, and I and and I'll go back. I still practice. This is a registered nurse. I work out at a, a little cr critical access hospital every other weekend, and because I want to keep my nursing skills up. But the most rewarding part that I, the piece that I get is being one, being able to take care of a patient and their family. And two, I see so many of them out in the community and they come up to me and, and I, and I didn't save this patient's life, but they felt like I did. And them coming up and saying, you know what, you saved my life. And just kind of having that, having that feedback and knowing that I've made a difference in someone's life. And especially as a registered nurse, because we go into nursing and I, I teach this to my students. If you're going into nursing for the money, you've chose the wrong profession. We go into nursing because we care, we take care of patients and we're going to be working all these extra hours but it's not for the money. It's because you are taking care of someone's 
father, mother, child, husband, wife, whatever it is, that's who you're taking care of. You're not taking care of, of them because of the money. You're taking care of them because you have that, that care inside of you to do that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, wow. thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Another good question, Paul. Thanks for bringing that one in. Hey, uh, we're, we're at the end. We ought to, ought to go ahead and wrap this up. I, I want to say thank you, uh, Lance. Uh, yeah, thank it was you. so nice of you to make the time to join us today. I think the insight that you brought in about a little bit about the industry, you know, the field of nursing and, and the impact it's had and how it's, 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 it's going up and down. And, and now with the increased enrollment for anybody who's out there is considering Hey, do I want to go into nursing? I mean, you've heard from uh, from one of our instructors, one of our clinical professors here teaching and, and what he's what he does. He's brought out some fantastic highlights. Uh, I, I would encourage any of you out there who are considering this. Maybe you want to reach out to him and, and, and ask him. And, and along those lines, Lance, if somebody does have a question and they go, how do I how do I talk to that guy? That guy has got you know everything I want to know. How do I reach you? Would you be willing to share uh, maybe a contact point? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, my, I'm on the faculty. Um, if you look in the College of Technology under ADRN or the LPN program, I'm there. My, my office phone is there. I love talking to students. And especially, I like talking to kids that are in high school so that they can start to segue into, into nursing. So, you know, and, it, it, and I always say this too, you are never too old to go into to nursing. And that's, we, like I said, we deal with a lot of non-traditional students that are, um, that, that really are kind of looking for that going, oh, I don't want to go into maybe such a, such a, a, a really demanding program because the BSN program, you're there five days a week where our program is a lot more flexible for that person that has to work and still take care of a family, family life and things like that. So uh, yeah, maybe we can, it looked like Angela was just saying about maybe if we can post the website and, uh, and, and they can contact me or anyone in our, in our, uh, that is uh, in our faculty. Yeah. Yeah. That might be something we can add in as, as one of the closing cards or something, Paul, unless we got yeah. up now and we can say it, it's at to isu.edu uh, forward slash tech. And yeah. uh, that'll get him onto the college of technology page. Thank you very much, Angela. And then uh, just look up, look up Lance Howell. I mean, uh, what an awesome, what an awesome presentation and, and the ability to come talk. I mean, that's the caliber of fantastic teachers we have here. And Lance, again, thank you for making a difference, both as a nurse and, uh, and here at, uh, in health occupations and the College of Technology as an instructor. Thank uh, you. It's, it's wonderful to have you on board. And I'm, I'm sure that those who come in front of your class, they're going to have a fantastic time learning from you. Hey, Paul, you want to wrap us up here? We're, we we need to close this. I will wrap this up. So, yes, uh, we'll have those links for the um, College of Technology um, in uh, our postings. But if you want to get a hold of us, you can reach us on at by emailing us at cetrain at isu.edu. You can visit our website at cetrain.edu isu.edu and you can call us the old-fashioned way at 208-282-3372 gary angela as always it's so great to have you with with us on this podcast and lance again thank you so much for everything uh, i really learned a lot today and uh i hope others are inspired by uh, uh and to get into the nursing field yes excellent thank you very much hey, you all be thank safe you. out there have a great weekend you too thanks, thanks.